This question comes to us from Kay, and Kay writes this, Dear we, how does one approach private confession and absolution without using the pastor as a shrink and a psychiatrist? Is my premise wrong? A pastor is not the theological counterpart to the secular equivalents mentioned above? Thanks for the help, Kay. Kay, very good question. Let me answer this question here by just bit by bit. First and foremost, I would actually argue that it is the main responsibility, not of the parishioner, but of the pastor to know his vocational limits. In other words, the pastor needs to know where his role as pastor begins and ends. And what this looks like is this. When people come into my office, what I typically do is I give them a screening, a mental health screening. It's a really short little test. That's two or three uh, questions on each of the sheets. And that discerns whether or not they have a mental health issue such as anxiety or depression or something, something called bipolar disorder. Those things cannot be handled by me as a pastor. I'm not able to prescribe the needed medication. That way, as a pastor, I know when to refer them on to another mental health professional to deal with with those issues. Now, once those are taken care of, my job as a pastor is going to differ from other therapists and counselors greatly. The job of the pastor indeed does. The pastor is going to deal with the issues of sin, like other counselors well. They, we're all dealing with sin and so trying to figure out how to maneuver over the sin and what to do with it. But what the pastor will do is the pastor will seek to discern sin by the means of the law. The law will be proclaimed into the person's predicament and situation to discern whether they have been sinned against or whether it's sin that they have committed. If it is sin that they've committed, the pastor will then work to bring about something called confession. In other words, we want the individual to own their sin. When they have committed a sin against their brother or sister, they, we want them to own it personally, to confess it with their mouth. Now, once that has happened, here is where the great, great difference is going to come about with pastors versus other therapists and counselors. The pastor then is going to take an individual such as an office like this, and they're going to go from here to the sanctuary, yes, the sanctuary, before the altar where that confession of sin is going to be confessed, before the altar, before the Lord, before the Lord's servant, the pastor. Now, once it is confessed, the pastor then is not going to prescribe medication. He's not going to prescribe 10 steps to overcome that sin. He's not going to tell him to celebrate the sin that it's okay. And he's not going to tell him to diminish the sin. The pastor is going to pronounce, yes, the gospel, this wonderful absolution of Jesus Christ in the stead and by the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. I now forgive you of all of your sins. You are forgiven in the in the church service, in that context of the sanctuary, before the altar by God's servant, you are forgiven of your sins. And then in that absolution, there is given that wonderful piece of that assurance that they are forgiven for Christ's sake. So as I'm explaining this, you can hear there's a great difference between a pastor and another counselor or therapist. And so back to your question here, the pastor is not the same as a counselor or therapist, by no means even though they are both trying to deal with the issues of sin. The pastor's tools are different, and the solution to that sin is going to be vastly different than other individuals where the pastor brings about absolution. So there you have it. It's a wonderful question. Thanks for asking it, and we'll catch you all next time. Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, 10, or $25 is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click donate now.